Hi, and welcome to Financial Analytics. For this course, it is expected that students have completed our foundation course in analytics and has a working knowledge of how to build a predictive model on large data sets. The objective of the program is to provide you an understanding of what is meant by banking and financial institutions with emphasis on how analytics is applied in the risk and marketing functions. By the end of this course, you will have acquired knowledge of the financial services domain with a focus on banking, credit cards, loans and insurance, as well as gain hands-on experience in building regression models and using other statistical techniques on real business data sets to solve real business problems. We hope you enjoy our course. If you have any questions, do email us at info at jigsawacademy.com. Let's start this course by firstly taking a close look at money, which is the raw material and the finished product of banking and financial institutions. The outline for this topic is, what is money, money and its origins? How does money move in the economy? How does the banking system support the flow of money? Now, let's look at what is money. It all started with the barter system. You had something I wanted. I had something you wanted. So we exchanged one for the other. So perhaps I exchanged grain for fish, and you exchanged fish for grain. Both of us now have grain and fish, and maybe we are content. But in the long run, this turns out to be too tedious. We also realized that it did not always allow us to meet all our needs. So you might have something somebody wants, but you do not always want what that person has. What happens then? Well, over time, people move to some common standards of what was valuable, and these are used as units of exchange. In those early days, cattle, seashells, and precious metals were all considered valuable. As time progressed, and people realized the impracticality of traveling and bartering with cattle, seashells, and metal, the concept of money was slowly introduced. People started using coins and notes, as it was much easier to carry, and as long as it was backed by precious commodities, they served the purpose of exchange. So, to conclude, what is money? It is a measurement of account. It is a storage of value. It is a medium of exchange. Money is the lubricant which makes the economy go round, and a lot of our lives depend on being able to holistically use money to lead fruitful lives. Let's now understand money and its origins. So if we were to take a look at money and its origins, we find that the intrinsic value of precious or not commonly available metals was realized very early on. It evolved into a banking system, which was a concept of storing things of intrinsic value in granaries and temples. Coins were introduced first, after which came printed banknotes, a much more standardized form of money. Printed notes were first seen in China in 1880, but due to prolonged inflation, it slowly lost its value, and they went back to using commodities as units of exchange. In the 17th century, Europeans discovered how to use standardized notes and this is how notes and coins came to the rest of the world. However, in our modern economies, we've gone beyond this, right? We've moved on to checks and drafts, which can be used in lieu of coins and notes. So, how does money move in the economy? Now that we know that money is something which has intrinsic value, let's understand something called the circular flow of money. Let's start from one part of the circle. The household, you and I we go to the product markets to get consumption-related goods. So these farms and companies actually made goods in bulk and sell them to multiple product markets. These farms and companies in turn go to the factor market to purchase labor, land, raw materials, etc. Now, who is part of the factor market? It's all of us. We householders are part of the factor market and it is where we get our payment from. Any savings we have, we store in banks and financial institutions. Thus, the same money circulates within so many entities. Banks and financial institutions pay interest to these householders for the money that they utilize further. This money, which is stored with them, 
is lent out to farms and companies as loans to start businesses. These farms and companies, in turn, pay interest to these financial institutions. They also pay taxes to the government. The government also buys goods and services from these farms and companies. The government, incidentally, makes payments to us householders who are government employees, and every one of us also pays taxes to the government. So you see, there is a smaller cycle within this larger cycle. Now that we know that there's a circular flow of money which keeps the economy thriving, let's take a look at how the banking system supports this flow. You cannot randomly print money. If you and I print 100 rupee notes and we go and tell somebody that this is a 100 rupee note, please accept it. Do you think they will take it? No. And why won't they accept it? Because there is no value to that money. It's just paper, until backed by an intrinsic value which comes simply because the government has kept in the treasury gold and silver to back up the notes that it makes. So the treasury is the place where physical precious metals are kept so that the government can create banknotes which can circulate in the economy. You and I know this, right? If you and I go to a bank and pay some X amount of money, we will get Y amount of gold in exchange. Now, in this banking system, there's something called fractional reserve we will take into account when we start studying how banks work. Basically, what happens is that the Treasury releases the notes to the central bank of the country in question, for example, the Federal Reserve Bank for USA or the Reserve Bank of India. This central bank's balance sheets look like this. The assets are so many kilos of gold and silver, which is worth X amount of money, and the liabilities is X amount of money in note form and coin form. So this is the money system that exists in an economy. Now, what happens is that you and I cannot have an account with the central bank. Instead, the central bank has a secondary structure. There are commercial banks, where all of us householders as well as businesses and companies can go to to, to open accounts, thus partaking in this flow of currency. We now know that all money in the world is backed up by reserves in gold, silver, and precious metals, which each government maintains. To recap, we looked at the meaning of money and its origins. We studied the circular movement of money in the economy, and we also looked at how the banking systems assists in this flow. That's it for this topic. For any queries, do email us at info at jigsawacademy.com. Thanks.